Okay, and today we have an extension question on electron configuration. And so here we've got a modern periodic table. And uh, notice that it goes all the way up to Organesson 118, which uh, a couple of years ago was uh, finally discovered, uh, but not occurring naturally. So our modern periodic table is based on the electron configurations of the elements. And for elements in groups one and two, that's uh, these two groups, uh, then the valence electrons, that's the outer electrons, are going to go into uh, the s orbitals, uh, whereas uh, groups uh, 13 to 18, that's the p block, right, the valence electrons are going into the uh, p orbitals. Um, and notice while we're here that uh, helium is placed either in group 2 or in group 18 um, because group 2 because it's um, filling in s orbitals and group 18 because uh, the p orbitals uh, or the, it's, it's got a full outer shell and then in groups 3 to 12 uh, you, you know this as the uh, d block and uh, the valence electrons are going into uh, the uh, d orbitals and it's worth noting that uh, the principal quantum number or the uh, period number the principal quantum number is one more than the uh, subshell that the electrons are going into so in the uh, first period of the d block uh, you can remember that uh, the electrons that are going into the three uh, d subshell um, where the uh, number three is one less than the principal quantum number which is four in this case and going down lastly to the lanthanoids and the actinoids uh, you can see that the uh, the lanthanoids are going to fit in uh, here right and uh, the principal quantum number uh, is six minus four for them so so the, all these lanthanoids all right are filling in um, at the f sub uh, the f subshell and it is uh, see six here minus two is four right so they are filling in the the four f uh, subshell and similarly with the actinoids look see the uh, they f squeeze in here in the uh, seventh period all right so again that's uh, that's uh, the an f uh, subshell but in this case it's going to be seven minus two which is five right so you could they're filling in the the five f subshells and notice we've got uh, uranium here uh, which is the largest naturally occurring element even though quite a bit smaller than organesson which is the largest um, atom ever created Okay, so let's try some uh, questions now. We've got a periodic table here to help us. And the first question we can try is um, give the full electron configurations of calcium and zinc in normal SPD uh, notification. Okay, so here's uh, calcium. All right, let's do that one first. Okay, so we've got uh, calcium. And uh, first of all, we're going to fill in the uh, 1s2. Then we're going to fill in the 2s2. Then we're going to uh, fill in the 2p6. Then we've got 3s2. Uh, then we've got 3p6. Then we've got 4s2. And that's uh, the electron configuration of uh, calcium. Okay, so let's do uh, zinc now. And uh, here is zinc. Okay, and so uh, we've got the same as calcium, all right? Uh, so we've done up to up to here. And you see for zinc, uh, this is the 3D uh, subshell. And by the time you get all the way along to zinc, you've got a full 3D subshell. So we can uh, put 3D 10 here um, because it's full and it doesn't really matter whether you do 4s2 3d10 or the other way around uh, we've done it this way around uh, because 
we were doing filling, we were just doing electron configurations. But uh, we should notice that uh, because this subshell is full, these are the valence electrons. Uh, and then with calcium, of course, uh, these 4s2 electrons are the valence electrons for calcium. So here's another question then. Given the maximal oxidation states of elements in group 2, okay, so here's, here's our group 2, and group uh, 12, here's our group 12, uh, that's, they're both plus 2, right? So the ox maximum oxidation states, and given that we're talking about metals here, we're talking about uh, charges on ions, um, we've got uh, 2 plus ions. What are the valence electrons of barium and mercury? Okay, so here's barium. Put a little square around barium uh, and so the valence of electrons the only are these two electrons here in the 6s2 subshell okay so uh, for barium uh, our valence electrons are 6s2 they're the outer electrons um, and uh, for mercury, you might know that uh, mercury symbol is Hg. Here's our Hg, All right, a little box going around mercury. And you see it's at the end of um, the, uh, the subshell, which is, uh, it's in period six, right? So it's uh, 5D, All right, okay? So this one would be uh, 4D. Right, and this uh, subshell here is, uh, is 5D. Um, and so uh, in Mercury, you've got 5D10, right? so, which is a full subshell. So they're not valence electrons. So our valence electrons in Mercury are uh, also 6S2, same as barium. Okay, next question. Um, let's switch colors again. We'll go to a bit of purple now. Uh, given the maximum oxidation states of elements in group 17, all right, and 7, okay, so here's 7 and here's 17, right, uh, with the exception of fluorine, uh, their maximum oxidation states are plus 7, okay. What are the valence electrons of manganese and bromine? Okay, so here's manganese here. Here's manganese here. And... Uh, so let's write our manganese here. So our valence electrons are uh, not only the 4s2, not only the 4s2, which are here, which are the highest energy electrons, but uh, our 3D subshell is only partially filled. Okay, so we've got these um, electrons here, one, two, three, four, five electrons here uh, that are also valence electrons. Okay, so we're going to put uh, 3D5 in there. And it wanted, what else, manganese and, uh, and bromine. Okay, so here's bromine here. Here's bromine here. And so our, our 3D subshell is, uh, is full, right? So in this case, our valence electrons, which have got to add up to 7 because... Um, we've got an, a maximum oxidation state of plus 7. So now we have our 4s2 again uh, for bromine. 4s2, uh, but we're not good. The uh, 3D is full, right? Whereas our uh, 4p, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, our 4p5. They are, uh, that's an unfilled subshell or partially filled subshell. And so those seven electrons here are our seven famous electrons for bromine. Okay, next question is here. Use the periodic table to write down the full electronic configuration of organism. That's organism, our recently discovered last element. Um, so we've got to write it down the electronic configuration. 
Now, a, a neat trick that you may or may not have come across uh, is illustrated by this little table here, where you've got um, the rows as the period numbers or the principal quantum numbers, that's these ones. And then uh, you've got a table where the columns are the orbitals, SPD and F. And uh, F is beyond A level. Um, and you're, these are the, this, this is the F block here. And you can see um, you can fit 14 electrons. You've got seven orbitals uh, of the F subshell. OK, so let's put a little 14 here just to remind you of that. D, you know, already uh, 10 electrons can go into D, 6 and 2 for P and S respectively. OK, so let's let's just work through um, the electron configuration of organism. All right, so we've got OG. Um, and uh, first of all, we're going to fill in for uh, the 1S. All right, so we're going to uh, write a little arrow like that. So we've got uh, 1S2. Uh, then the next uh, subshell to fill is the uh, 2S uh, subshell which is also an orbital. And then like the arrow suggests, we're going to go 2p and 3s. OK, so uh, 2p is next and we can fit 6 in there. Uh, 3s is next and we can fit 2 in there. Then in the direction of the arrow, we're going to go 3p, 4s. OK, uh, so uh, 3p, we can fit 6 in and 3 and 4s. Uh, 4s, we can fit 2 in. All right. Uh, so at this stage, let's just um, mark off on the periodic table what we've uh, filled in. These were the 1s2, uh, then we went 2s2, uh, then we went 2p6, uh, then we went 3s2, right. then we went uh, 3p6, then we went 4s2, and that's where we got up to. All right. So notice next we're starting off at 3d, uh, 3D here, and this is our, our 3d subshell here right and of course that's filled if we're going to uh, uh, talk about organism so we're going to write uh, 3d10 all right so that's all those filled in next is uh, is this slot all right so which is uh, 4p and they're all filled so we're going to say 4p6 all right so uh, so that we've done um, down to here right and then next the arrow suggests that uh, we're going to to 5s, right, which are these two uh, here, right, so I'm going to put 5s2 in here, and then we've done all including the um, red arrow. So then, uh, then we're going to go up to 4d, right, which is uh, this little subshell uh, here, right, and it's full and there's 10, right, so we can write 4d10. We'll have to start on an, another row, 4d10, um, and then uh, then it, it says we get to 5p, which is this subshell here. So 5p, and 5p is filled when we've got six electrons in it. And then the next subshell to fill, which is also an orbital, is 6s, all right, which is uh, this little block here. So we've got 6s2. Um, okay, going back up uh, to, to uh, 4f. So 4f it starts getting interesting all right so as we said this is the f block uh, here this is the f block that and it says in little writing just here that's the f block uh, so we've got uh, 4f and 5f all right so our next uh, electrons to to get filled in are these 14 electrons here okay so 4f14 after 6s2, we've got 4f14, 4f14. Um, and then our arrow suggests that we're going to fill in 5d next. All right, so let's come back up to the d block. All right, and this is a 5d uh, subshell. Okay, and up to Mercury there. So next is 5d, and it's full when we've got 10 electrons in it, like so. And then next is 6p. Uh, so this is our 6p here. So we've got 6p and that's full when we've got 6 in it. Um, and then then 7s. OK, so 7s is uh, down here. Getting into our radioactive elements now. Uh, so let's write uh, down our 7s2, which we just did. All right, we're getting quite close to organism now. Uh, so um, after 7s, 
uh, we, we move along to 5F, okay, which is uh, this is, is our actinoids. Okay, so uh, and there's again there's 14 of them there, so we're going to say 5F14. 5F14. I'm going to need a third row. Um, after 5F F is 6D, all right, 6D, which is uh, this dot here. Okay, so that the 10 of course. So we've got 6D of those. Um, and then lastly, we get all the way along to the end of 7P. So this is 7P here, right? And by the time you get to organescent, that's full as well with six electrons in it. So 7P6. 7P6 has uh, is, gets you all the way to organescent. So there you have it. There's the uh, electron configuration of organescent. Okay, moving on to the next question. We're into uh, prediction ground at the moment. So it is predicted that in order to complete the next row of the periodic table, that would be principal quantum number eight. All right, so we'll just write a little eight down at the bottom there. Um, you'd have to start with electrons in the 8s shell. That would be these two here. And it'd be also necessary to fill in the elements in the first of the G block. OK, so G block doesn't exist. This is imaginary now. And you'd have to squeeze it in uh, just after radon there, uh, which would be 5G. And it, just like uh, the F block is, is squeezed in here, um, these two, right, even before and on the left of the F block would be a G block uh, starting after raid on there and that would be 5g okay so here's a question how many 5g orbitals will need to be filled okay so we're going to in true quantum theory fashion uh, build up from uh, the lowest level right so uh, s p d f and the new one would be g right so we have one s orbital uh, we have three p orbitals, we have five um, d orbitals, we have seven f orbitals. So it makes sense that if there was a g uh, sub shell, it would have nine uh, orbitals in it. Okay, so uh, nine would be our answer to that. And last question, assuming no orbitals from any shells in the ninth period, that would be adding another uh, period down here. Uh, are occupied predict the atomic number of the element beneath organescent okay so that would be this element here um, that element there what would be the atomic number okay so atomic number of that so that's the last question we're going to do and for that let's update our uh, little table here uh, for a uh, for g orbitals okay so um, first uh, G orbital would be 5G, right? So we're going to write a little 5G in here. And just for completeness, let's put 6G and uh, 7G in there. Um, now here we got to organescent, right? So let's just put uh, og, og there. That's what we got to og. We're going to have to start in the eighth uh, period, right? So we're going to have 8S, 8P, 8D, 8f and 8g here we're not going to need all of these right but uh, let's let's just like we did before let's build up until we get to our uh, element below organescent here so if uh, if this was organescent that i'm uh, writing on there next uh, orbital be filled would be the 8s orbital right so we've got uh, on top of organescent we've got 8s2 uh, then we're going to come right up uh, to here uh, for the and fill in this new imaginary 5G subshell, right? So it would be 5G, and we've just said there'd be nine orbitals, so it would have 18 electrons in it, All right? Then the next one would be 6F. Now, uh, F orbitals we know uh, have 14 electrons in them. Uh, next one would be 7D. D, uh, orbit, uh, D subshell has 10, right? And then, uh, and just before we do, 8f let's let's um let's notice that uh, we've we've done 8s we've done the new 5g uh we've done the new 6f we've done the new uh, 710 and 
uh, once we've got to 8p that's this block here all right that'd be the eight block eight and uh, because we've got all the way along to uh, group 18 it's full all right so we're going to put 8p6 um, so we if we added up those two new numbers we've got 2 18 14 10 and 6 all right and the sum of all those equals uh, uh, sum of all those equals 50 the new ones plus our organism which was 118 we see that there um, plus 118 uh, add those two together and you get 168 so 168 is our prediction of the atomic number of the element beneath organism there you have it